Hello and welcome back to the Single Malt Review. In our, um, not our usual habitat here, it's because, what are we up to today, Dave? We are distilling. Yes, yes. indeed. We're going to make, um, funnily enough, a rum. Mm. Yeah. No rum. malt this time, but certainly still whiskey adjacent. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, we're going to do it fairly quickly here. We'll make a few jump cuts, because um, otherwise it's just a lot of water heating up. Um, which is the uh, boring reality mm -hmm. of a lot of brewing and what distilling. So, uh, well, yes, um, this is my uh, extremely dirty pot still mm. here. Um, dirty because it also serves as my beer boiler for mm. when I'm brewing beer. And bug it if I'm going to clean mm -hmm. it every time. So, um, that's just uh, the way things are. Only dirty because it's had a lot of use and a lot of love lately, not for any other reason. Yeah, well, that's just representative of mm. my latest. Um, boil over there, there's all this jolly hops stuck to it, but it's what's inside that counts, yes. perfectly clean in there and it will do its job just fine as a still. So, we're going to crack into that and we'll hopefully, hopefully see a bit of spirit today. Yeah, so you've been fermenting molasses, golden syrup and the like. Yes, I've done, days. um, I'm doing a sort of two part one here, we've got the uh, molasses which we'll be doing today, mm. um, that wash and I've done a golden syrup wash as well to see if I can see any difference in the kind of the weight of the rum, mm. weight of the spirit that comes out, and then I'll um, do a bit of blending on the back end before I put them into wood to try and achieve the sort of the best the best the rum can be. So, so we've got our um, molasses wash here looking pretty dark, but through the uh, the wonder of distilling, let's see if I can not spill any here. Through the wonder of distilling, oh, never mind. Um, it's going to come out white, completely white. It's like um, this wash here is Michael Jackson and the still is the 90s music industry. Frightening stuff. All right, so that's a good charge of the still there. Don't want to overload it. Put it all together. Where did I even put the top? Here it is. There we are. And being a small still here, it all just screws together every single time, which is a bit of a pain, but oh, cheaper than a Forsyth job. So we are away on the burner here. This is my um, Blickman burner. Curiously even filthier than the pot still itself. Um, that gets used for my beer as well. And it's uh, obviously direct fired just like the old days, and firing it with the LPG. I'm going to give it quite a bit of gussy while we're at the heating up phase. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to be really, really boiling away at your spirit once you're actually um, getting your, getting your rum or whiskey out. But uh, on the way there, you can be pretty rough with it. So that's what I'm going to do in the interest of time. So a bit of the um, distilling science, I suppose, while we're waiting for the old. Um, temperature to rise here, we're at uh, a rather disappointing 30 degrees after 5 minutes, but like I say, um, a lot of waiting for water to heat, um, and this watched pot is going to have to boil some way or the other. Um, so distilling, uh, what's really kind of going on in here is, it sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty simple um, when you can get your mind around it. What we have is essentially a open thermal system, an open thermal cell. Heat is being introduced into the system through the burner, and once we reach the proper temperature, it will be resulting in evaporation, which is bonds breaking, which requires an input of energy. So that's the one, the plus side of the thermal cell. As it comes through the line arm here into this water-cooled chamber, the um, you call that a worm tube, worm tub, if it was a proper Scotch distillery. I almost completely died out now, but I think some distilleries do use them. Um, that's then going to pull the energy away from the system and it's going to recondense into its liquid form. And the reason why the whole thing works is that alcohol, ethanol, comes off much, much sooner, much lower temperature than water does. Water obviously boils at um, 100 degrees if you're in a sensible country, um, a different number if you still use uh, Imperial, something rather Fahrenheit. Um, and so as the temperature comes up, the Ethanol will start distilling first, start evaporating, and then the system will close while the ethanol is still there. It won't heat all the way up to 100, it will heat 
until the ethanol is starting to come off, and then that will start stealing thermal energy from the system. So it will hold at that temperature. About 78 degrees is when ethanol starts coming off. And then it will, as the ethanol starts to deplete, it will come back up and eventually reach 100, at which point it's just water in there, and it will never go above 100 until the water is gone because it will evaporate and keep the system closed, which is exactly how rice cookers work, which is a common common, common um, conundrum people have. But um, yeah, and we've risen approximately four degrees and I've explained the whole thing, so there you go. <laughs> Back to waiting. All right, so that's dribbling away, that's what we're after. Here's my separated mess here, which you see is, if it shows up in the sunlight here, just a little bit blue, which is a um, good tell that you've got methanol on your hands, not ethanol. So if it's blue, don't drink it. Simple as that. I won't always be as clear as this either, but uh, that is one of the telltale signs. Yeah, still coming out pretty fast. Don't really want it any quicker than that. Um, this is the first distillation, of course, so um, you don't have to be super super careful with it but um, it's still better to distill slower rather than quicker if you have the time and the inclination but it'll be in our second distillation that I'll really um, I'll really have it going very very slow slow as I have the patience for righty right so approximately um, well exactly 13 days later um, I've got it in my wood here I think it's looking after it um, We'll have a wee look at what we've got, 13 day old rum. Not expecting a great deal, but one thing you will see, have a wee bit off there. Snaggy Mingus and Campbell having a look. Yum yum. Throwing the cats on, here's the rain again. Too. Um, look at that, look at how much colour it's taken on already. Shows you how quickly um, spirits will take the colour out of the wood before they'll do any other significant maturation. This is a European oak cask. It's had, well, what has it had? It's had an extremely unsuccessful peat of whiskey. It's had another rum, and most recently it's had a um, had a strong cask ale in there. So it's um, been around, but there's plenty of um, plenty of goods left in the wood, and um, I think it will age this one. Probably not in 13 days, but give it a year. I think we'll really have something have something to look at here. Hmm. Identifiable as, identifiable as rum, so that's that's something. But boy, yeah, that's got a um, got a way to go. You'd have to say. Oh, not bad though. Not bad. All right. Well, cheers. Um, thank you for tuning in to this uh, remarkably practical episode of the Single Malt Review. Myself and Dave will be back with some of the um, usual programming very very shortly. Plunger.